Okay, so recently I made this collection and this was some scraps I had laying around. I think this was some scraps from when I made the um, Blossom collection, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure, but uh, I think some of the same colors were used. But I wanted to make this cane and make uh, another collection from these colors. I really love this colorway. So today we are going to make a cane and make some more beautiful earrings. So let's get right into the video. Hey girl, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you've been a part of the Oh So Pretty Squad, I'm so glad that you're back. If you want to join the squad, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button and you are in. On this channel, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of my handmade accessories business as well as give you helpful tips and helpful information for running a small handmade or product based business. So don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Let's create something oh so pretty. Okay, so I've already formed this cane into more of a square instead of a circle because what I want to do is I want to not just make it a scrap cane, like just make the colors more like. I don't want to say messy, just all over the place. I want to create some type of pattern. So what I'm going to do is I am going to lay some solid colors in between the, it's not really terrazzo, but just the gathered colors. I don't know really what how to say it, but I want to just make some lines and make some a pattern with some solid colors. So it's just not like sporadic. If that makes sense. It's going to still look sporadic. But you'll see. You'll see. I just I don't know really how to explain. I don't know the terminology here today. I don't know why. But the words aren't coming to me. But I want to kind of create a pattern with some solid colors. So that's what I'm doing. And basically how I'm doing that is I'm just cutting the cane in half. Or you know in different halves. And then laying the color in between to create these lines that are going to show up whenever I cut the cane. So that's what we're doing here. So let's continue to do that and I'll check back in with you for the next step. Now I decided to cover the whole cane with this color because I wanted the pattern to have like a circle around it as well, like lines through it, but also have a color around it as well. So you'll kind of see what I'm talking about when I go to cut it. But yeah, that's why I'm basically covering the whole thing with this peach clay. And yeah, now I'm just getting the air bubbles out of it. And yeah, we're just gonna get ready to cut this up. We're gonna roll it out and then I'm gonna cut it. And yeah, let's do it. Okay, so it's now time to cut it. So now you can see the pattern that I added to it in by slicing it and putting the colors in it. Kind of give it these lines that almost look like 
pinwheels almost and then layering the peach around it also gave it another line of color and so what I'm doing is slicing up the roll and I'm placing it on some black clay because I want it to have a black background and now I'm kind of just blending everything together so I can make it one full sheet and then we can begin to cut that out. All right, so these are the shapes that I cut out. One of those shapes, I'm looking at my earrings right now and I'm like, where did that go? Did I mess it up? Did I, I don't know where one of those earrings went to. Um, those long ones, I'm like, I don't have those here with me. So like, where did they disappear to? I do not know. But anyway, I have this roller that I recently got and it's like, cuts this diamond pattern, not cuts it, but it, um, embosses or debosses I think this is embossing I always forget which way is the different is the two but basically makes this pattern on the clay with this roller which I love this is my very first time using this roller and I love look using it on black it just looks very sleek so can't wait to use it on different projects but yeah this is going to be the top components for this collection is going to be black and then the back of the pieces are going to be black and I'm not doing any resin on these these are going to just be matte I think the pattern and the texture is going to stand out for itself so we're just going to roll with that and I cannot wait for you guys to see well you already had a little bit of sneak peek at the beginning of the video but can't wait for you to see how they actually turned out I think they turned out really well and I can't wait to rock some myself but yeah they're super cute All right, I'm coming to you guys from the sanding station. So basically, I want to show you the difference between um, a piece that's just been cut out and baked um, and not finished, right? So it's so important that um, I finish my pieces. So this is a piece, let me show you before. This is a piece that's just, see, it's not even. It's very rough. Um, the edges are rough. They're not um, sanded or buffed. I mean, look at that. That's all like trashy. 
get it to focus. It's not clean at all. Very rough. This is a piece that has been sanded. So it's very buttery to touch. It feels very buttery and soft. You see the ends cleaned up. This is a little dusty because I just had it on the table. But I'll put some Renaissance wax on it in a minute. But this is what it looks like. Totally different. Clean. The inside is clean. Soft to touch. Not rough. Feels like butter, baby. Yeah, that's the difference. So that and this is honestly what takes the most work in finishing the pieces making the design cutting them out baking them that's really easy right well coming out with the idea and all that kind of stuff could be a little bit challenging but once you got the idea you do it whatever not challenging but just takes creative thought but once you have that this finishing part gluing the bags doing all that is what's really going to take the piece to the next level but it's also the most time consuming so but I just wanted to stop in and show you guys the difference. That looks so good in comparison. All right, let's continue this process. Okay, so this is one of the main reasons I like to sand my resin pieces after I have did the UV resin to apply my backs is because sometimes you might get a little bit of overspill. So usually what I do is I take these scissor type pliers and I kind of raise it up and basically I'm cutting it off, but I'm doing it in a way that I'm not gonna raise it up from the back side of it, if that makes sense. So you gotta really do it very delicately to kind of raise up that overspill. And then I'm using my Dremel to kind of sand it out back flat. And I love to go over the edges of my backs with the Dremel just because sometimes the UV resin, it dries. It is a hard coat, so it can be sharp at some point. So I try to make sure I am doing it to where everything is soft and not sharp. All right, here is the finished product. They look so good. I think they'll be available to shop this weekend. So if you are interested in getting some, make sure you're on the tech squad so you can receive a text message as soon as these are loaded to the site. See you in my next video. Peace out. Like, comment, subscribe to my auntie's channel. Bye.